I saw now Lady Pando saying, hey, Russia must, must. <laughs> I'm not going to do when Russia comes, guys. <laughs> when Vladimir Putin comes, <laughs> hey. He's already here, bro. He was in Centurion yesterday. There was a tremor there. That was Putin, for sure. You see? <laughs> you see? He's landing. He's landing. <laughs> Who do we call? <laughs> Looks call like those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I think South Africa's not a mall, but I think Kanka lacks. Yeah. He probably, he, he probably got, got some Russian accent hidden somewhere. <laughs>
<laughs> no, I, I remember yeah. it was 200,000. No. It was no, a big no, amount, no? It was a big amount, but not 200,000. $200,000. $20,000 there. Uh, yeah, somewhere there. Oh, I don't remember. Okay, yeah. My bad, man. I can't but remember. Yeah. Yeah. But Shout not 20,000 dollars also. Yeah, but yeah. It, we get, we get, I get what you mean. You get it, yes. right? Chillers <laughs> are like the coolest people. I, I was on Zakes Pantwini's uh, Alive two days ago mm. and he sees me, right? He sees me pop up. He's like, hey, shout out, stop and do us here. What do I call you? Because you guys call me a chiller, man. I'm like, no, nah, we're all chillers. Yeah. You know, we're all chillers. Community we're building. We're all chillers, different walks of life. I was on the Khao train last week, spoke to an Indian guy for 30 minutes. He's Whoa. a huge fan of the an show. Indian Whoa. guy. Kyle. Kyle was straight from uh, Aura Tambo. Either Indian or Cape Malay, mm. right? But it was straight from Cape Town and it's like, yo, so I love your show, bro. Like you guys are doing amazing work, wow. and it's not even about the controversy. Yeah. Just the organic thing you guys are doing wow. just is wow. amazing. And this is an Indian guy, you Ooh. know. And you know we've got non-South African chillers yes, yes. all over the all world. Over, yeah. Like I was, I went to an optometrist. Yeah. Um, who's a chiller, yeah. you know, just inbox me like, yo, so come get a, a pair of glasses. What? I'll do an eye test for you, come get And there's another one in Richards Bay, who Usanel, who also said, come through, just get a, a pair of glasses. We literally have a chiller in almost every profession. Bro, you remind me of uh, New Year's Eve. Remember Ghost Lady? Yeah. So New Year's Eve, uh, and a lady was having some contractions. Oh, yeah, so yeah. she wasn't feeling well. So yeah. I had to rush her to the nearest oh, hospital. Yes, yeah. Yes. When I get there, the doctor was a chiller. <laughs> But then, here's where it gets crazy. Wait, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So he needed to put a, his hand inside so he can see what's happening. Yes. I'm like, ah, clima, 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 dog. Ah, <laughs> no chillers fingering my woman. <laughs> like, guy, wait, guy, wait. <laughs> Let's get a real doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want no chiller. <laughs> You're like, guy, me. Guy, me, man. Guy, me. Stop that sh fucking shit on yours. <laughs> Putting your the chiller, putting his fist now, yeah, you know, ah, darling, you oh, that's the weird part, right? Yeah. I remember I was sick, not feeling well. Went to the doctor, and one of the sisters helping the doctor is like, drop a pan. I'm like, I'm ill. I'm sick. I'm not feeling well. I'm feeling like shit. My stomach feels like shit. I've got stomach cramps, oh and you want me to drop goodness. a pan? Oh wow! Everybody's a chiller, dog, and 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 some guys from the airports, the metro cops said you owe them. Shout out to you! Oh yes! Oh yeah! I met metro cops. I don't know what you did, but some pretty boy metro cops. Those handsome guys who trained on Facebook. Yeah. They're like Saul. In, I think I was in Clipport or something. Saul, yo yo. Like yeah, I tell my guy for the guys. The metro cops from the airport say what's up. Oh yeah, I know them. They say what's up. He knows what's up. He owes us. <laughs> So it's crazy, man, when you meet chillers and, like, I mean, politicians are chillers, yeah. like, everybody. It's wild. It's wild, it's wild. dog. Yeah. And we love all of them, man. Now nah, we love. It's genuine love. When you yeah. meet them, it's genuine, genuine love. Like, there was a guy who was following me around at my party yesterday. Yeah. We took, like, three, four pictures, you know. <laughs> and at some point, and Jaws is here, you know, just played. I'm looking for water for Jaws. And the guy comes, like, hey, follow. He's like, yo, another one, last one, bro. I'm like, fam, I love you, man. <laughs> Right. Can I just enjoy, Can I enjoy my, my, my birthday party? It's ending in an hour's time. Can I just have fun? We, you know we've taken many pictures and you understood. I was like, ah, it's cool. So far. Then we love them, man. And then how's Aya taking us for Popeye? Because Aya was meant to do the sound today. <laughs> and then an hour ago, before we came, yeah. she said, she's like, yo, I can't make it. Family emergency. Yeah. Emergency. Yeah. And then I go on his Instagram, he's like, yo, is there a bra out there? I'll bring the snacks. <laughs> Niggas hanging. <laughs> he was, that's oh, his emergency. That's family emergency. He's, yes, family's emergency is a hangover. He had a blast, bro. Too much fun, bro. Oh. Guys, it's so much fun. Mash got kicked out for smoking weed in the club. For real. <laughs> Mash. That is so on brand. <laughs> Mash lit it up. You know, it was like placing it up. <laughs> Bounce the soy. <laughs> <laughs> out. Fuso comes and saves them. Fuso's like, you can't be <laughs> <laughs> his, his veins are popping. You know Fuso's a muscle guy, right? Yeah, no, no. You can't be <laughs> This is an establishment. Oh my God. They have rules. <laughs> Behave. Look at Donald. Look at my people. They're well -paid. They're sitting with their hands across the lap in the club. Drinking water. Oh, wow. Just walk away. Behave, man. I can't babysit you. I'm stressed. People are like, DJs are late and you're smoking away. And then Mesh said, this is the love I deserve. <laughs> Is this the love I deserve? 
Oh God! Ah, no, it was a movie last night. It was a movie. Oh, it was a movie, love, bro. But party was amazing. Bro, Thanks you gotta to do everyone. one in propaganda. There's a club called Propaganda in Pretoria. In Pretoria. Yeah. Oh. Fucking wicked club. Amazing. For real. The sound is the best sound I've ever played at. Shit. Let's go to propaganda. Propaganda. Because yeah. I'm, I'm getting a lot of. So uh, uh, um, Heavy K was supposed to be my surprise sure, guest, sure, right? Sure. And then uh, his cousin for service, his manager then forgot USBs where they were playing. Long story, but he called in the morning. I was like, don't worry, dog. A lot of people have been saying they want another one. Let's do proper. So I think I'll dog. put you on on the next one. You know what I mean? Mm. Rato, Khanyako's my girl. She'll be there. You'll be there. Aya's going to be there. Yeah, I must try a lady do try the yeah. ah, from, lady. You know, she's from my She needs the gigs. Yeah. Oh, the fuck. Without the manager, though. Yeah. It's a birthday gig. <laughs> it's not a pain gig. It's a love gig. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? It's a birthday gig. Yeah, dog. Nah, let's do it. Let's propaganda. Do it. Let's do propaganda. Ah, let's fuck it up proper, bro. Yeah. Yeah. That's my kind of proper. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it, dog. I, I was playing at propaganda this past Thursday. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I invited Pete Temple because Pete Temple is my boy. And yeah. he usually stays in Limpopo. Okay. So he was around Pretoria. Um, I'm like, yo, dude, I'm playing a propaganda come through. Yeah. So he comes through and then he gets there. We were drinking my rider. And then nice. after my set, I was tired. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm going home. Nice. And then he decided to chill with more Catmaster because they came and whatever. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Catmaster. Well, yeah. also there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Party, yeah. So by the end of the night, the bill was like 5,000, 6,000, somewhere there. Ooh. And then he had to pay 1.5. Catmaster, so, okay, fair enough. No, P Temple. Oh, P Temple. Yes. Okay, oh. Cool. So I wake up in the morning to like 10 missed calls from P Temple. Uh, I'm like, hey, boy, didn't I? <laughs> He's like, yo, dog, I spent my money I was meant to buy the bed with. <laughs> <laughs> you only live once. <laughs> Who's got time to sleep? <laughs> when clubs are open. <laughs> <laughs> He's spending his bed money on booze. <laughs> What is he gonna sleep on? <laughs> empty Hennessy's. <laughs> you wanna put crew together? Empty Hennessy's. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Hey, Slay Kings. Hey, dog. Oh, that's why I was supposed to buy a king size bed. That is a Slay bed. <laughs> slay Kings. Instead, is out there at the bar swiping. Hey, that's propaganda for yeah, you, dog. Nice. Wow, it's too nice. Make you spend okay. your bed money. Yeah. Hey, yeah. It's um, so um, late. Um, um, bed, um, bed, um, bed, um, now that's real propaganda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man Anyway man What a heavy week bro Oh my Oof. goodness You know till this day bro. I can't get over What happened to Ricky Rick man Like I just find myself At days off And I just think about The whole thing I'm like Phew. That's all of us actually Bro it's like Cause I'm just walking around With a heavy feeling And I remember Ricky Rick killed himself How did bro. you guys find out actually? Uh, I found out from uh, Eva Modica. Oh. Because uh, I follow on on WhatsApp. So she posted a, a, a post and she's like, um, Ricky Rick passed away. Jeez. I'm like, are you for real? Like, for real? She's oh. like, yeah, you committed suicide. That's how I found out. Mm. And then I'm, I posted it in the group, remember? <laughs> That's how most of us oh, found yeah, out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I found rem- it from you. Yeah. Yes, I was coming from uh, a recording. Which one is this one? And... Oh. Even. Rick. And in my head I'm like Ricky, Ricky Cause I did I wasn't aware of that song Home and all the other snippets of the interviews, you know, where he speaks about depression oh, yeah. or he speaks yeah. about him having his days numbered, you know, on earth and stuff. You know? And there was actually, I was shocked. He actually spoke about it in his own podcast. I've got a clip here. Yeah, he I've, I've, I've been missing all of those things. Even that song Home. Yeah. It makes so much because sense now. Because there's a clip now. also so when he was just talking with Slicker as well. Yeah. And he mentioned it. Ugh. In hindsight, it makes sense. Yo, mm. man. Yo, Yo, Ricky, bro. I was so shocked, man. Like, I thought Ricky had it all figured out. And that's what I thought, you know? Like, he's Ricky Rick. You know what I mean? But that's the thing, bro. Like, here's someone in the surface who seems like they've got it all. I mean, this guy was the face. He was the face of a bank. He, he, Recently, yes. face of a bank, cotton face, face of lotion, amazing, yeah, cotton face is amazing. Beautiful house. When I shot the interview with him, we shot at his house oh, in Waterfall. Yeah. Yes, beautiful house, beautiful wife, beautiful kids. So on the surface, he's like, this guy has, has it, all. it all. Dog, you he's know what got I mean? a barber shop. He's got a franchise. Oh, yeah, he's legends. a franchisee of legends barbers. Yeah. He's got several streams of income, and that's the thing. 
as someone like that, you can't come out and say, hey, guys, I'm not okay. Because number one, first thing they're going to say is, dude, you have money. How can but you he not has be okay? He's been saying it, Mac. He has been like, yeah. he's yeah. been these clips that he talks about. Yeah, it. just. No, I'm just saying, like, imagine if Casper posted, no, I'm not okay. He'd become a meme. People would Casper gets him, bullied. Bro. Casper is one of the most bullied people. Him and AK, actually. Yeah. You know? Like, most bullied. Even in his death now, Ricky Rick's death. People are under Casper's tweets saying, "Yeah, but you were not friends." Yeah, in an interview, you were asked if you you can you would you ever uh, 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 rekindle your friendship, and you said no, whatever, whatever. Now you can't mourn him. Like people are wicked. Mm. The things they say, bro. Yeah, I feel sorry for Casper, dog. I've yeah. had friends, yeah, who I don't like. We're a fallout. You know what I mean? Not even a fallout. We just not even grew up like apart. We there was obviously a beef, but it was not something that deep. But it caused a rift. Yeah. And now we're we're rekindling things. It's so cool, and it doesn't mean just because you're no longer friends with someone, you stop loving them. Yeah. Sometimes your ego gets in the way. You know what I mean? We're human, guys. You know. That's why these people are human. Casper and them, they're human. Yeah, I feel sorry for Casper. Dude. First was Jube Jube, now Ricky, and like you said, he never got to rekindle the the friendship. You know. Jube Jube. Not Jube Jube. Uh, Double HP, sorry. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but with them, they were also kind of uh, reconnecting. You yeah. know, they were also kind of reconnecting. Exactly. And that reminds me of another person who, you know, <laughs> my, 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 my thoughts go out to and pray is Robot Boy. Mm. You know? Yo, bro. Remember that video where there's um, Pura, Pura um, Ricky, and... Um, um, yo. Yo. Uh, Kilakao. Kilakao. Mm. Dancing and... He's and the only that one now is the only one left. That's crazy. And Ish. like you think, bro, like what is he going through, you know? So yeah, man, thoughts and prayers out to him. I think he canceled all his gigs because he was supposed to be the MC at my oh. party. And I understood, yeah. you know, he hit me up. I'm like, yo, bro, I can't. I'm like, dude, I didn't expect to see you. I'm not expecting you to see to you. Understand. You know what I mean? You've just yeah. lost a friend, yeah. you know? Like, no, take time, bro. Like, you know, be good, you know, like take the time, you know, and, 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 Thoughts and prayers out to anybody who was close to Ricky, man. Because yeah, condolences go out to his family, his friends, man. Kids, like, his friends, yeah. anybody who was close to him, you know? I never knew him like that. Like, we weren't close. Like, I wouldn't go to his house for a bri. Yes. Uh, but I did interview him once. Um, and I respected the guy. Like, you could just see the impact that he had on the industry. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't think there's a single person in the industry who can speak ill of Ricky Rick. Because that's how much mm -mm. of a good guy he was. He was yeah. just pure, bro. He was a pure guy. Pure, pure, pure. Pure, pure, pure. First time I heard which one is this one was from him. He was on the Microwave Boys. Wow. And he's like, hey, which one is this one? Wow, so that's bro. the first time I heard that. Wow, man. And, and then the last time I spoke to him uh, was... Um, when I did an episode where I was talking about Melo and Sleazy, mm -hmm. about the SABC thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. He called me out. He oh, reached wow. out to me. He's like, yo, bro, um, you know, please, I understand why you're upset, but just please understand the guys are still young in the industry, you know, they don't know how to move yet. So I just want to call on their behalf because the guys, the brews are really like heated right now and they're really mad, you know, and I understand where you're coming from, I understand where they're coming from. And, you know, uh, not right now, but I'd like to set up, like, you know, uh, 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 a, a, a gathering or us to meet. Just a meeting. Just man. so we can uh, iron this out because, bro. like, it doesn't sit well with me and whatever. Uh, I was like, yeah, dog, no bro. problem, dog. Like, I don't have any issues with anybody. Like, if they want to chat, yeah, chat Yeah, you're up. just telling the situation as it was. You know what I mean? Yeah. What and happened. he even spoke about how, remember I told you there was a song that I sent to Jazzy Q. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he released an album and then my song wasn't on the album so I trashed the album mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like no he did uh, get the song and they actually did a track oh. so he actually jumped on the track with Focalistic the, the beat that I sent to, to, to Jazzy Q oh. so he was like the, the, the song was done and he was going to put it up on, uh, on this new album that he's going to yeah, release yeah different album but because of what I said he was oh. like ah, oh shit you know what I mean for real that's the kind of guy he was bro oh. Ah, that's Ricky. Bro. He'd also like, call me when he started his podcast. Wow. Yeah, he'd call me for advice. He's like, yo, I'm trying this new thing. How does it work? Eh, bro, just... You see, that's Ricky. Yo, pure. Ricky, just like, man. yo, you're doing well. You're doing this thing and you're so good at it. 
I'm interested in exploring it. Help me. Mm. You know, not we're going to compete or I can't call Mac because I want to compete with him. No, it was just, and there's a guy who believed in young people, you know, one of the videos flying around. Put on, bro. Oh. It's like young people, guys, put on young people, believe in young people. I mean, remember when he was signed to, I think, Mabala Noise or whatever. Yeah. And there was that thing of uh, 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 that awards are being bought. Mm. And for most people would always trash the idea of buying awards up until they receive the awards. Yeah. Just like we all trash corruption. Yeah. yeah. Until someone's until like, yo, it favors you. 90, 50 meet and <laughs> uh, just fix a few potholes, right? Yeah. Yeah. You'll, yeah, exactly. You will benefit from it and keep quiet. But he was like, yo, if these awards are being bought, I don't want them. Mm. Who? Now that's integrity of the mm. highest order. You know, when you like, yo, this is what I said before and I'm possibly could be benefiting from this. I don't want it. And I see saw a screenshot. Night, the suicide notes that he... Oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah. You know? In yesterday's paper I saw yeah. it in yesterday's Sunday paper oh. Before we read that suicide mm. note um, I saw a screenshot Of some of the people we put on bro. This guy was amazing man mm-hmm. yeah, I, Yo. uh, Ricky Rick gave Uncle Vinny Lucas Raps The Big Hash D Koala Indigo Stella Dr. Pepper <laughs> And a cosign mm-hmm. He introduced a lot of rappers in the game He also paid for Nkalakata remix music video By Costa Titch He paid the whole thing Music video by Frank Casino Wow, we want the whole... Oh, with the snake. And yes, oh, wow, yes. Man. He also gave 3K to the fans that were watching and commenting on what it is, the music video, a music video that's not his. On top of that, he made a lot He made a lot of upcoming artists perform at Cotton Fest, which is massive, yeah. in front of more than 30,000 fans. Ricky Rick's impact in the game is very huge. His heart is very big. Give Ricky Rick his flowers while he's still alive. <clears throat> Bro, That's he even put on Aya at Cotton Fest. Did he? Aya once played at Cotton Fest, yeah. Mm. Wow. Ricky made it happen. Wow. That's Ricky, bro. What inter- uh, interactions did you have with him? Ricky, I remember um, he was still, uh, it was just before the Boss Zonga period. Yeah. Bumped into him at um, Taboo. You know, like he was talking of your number. He was pushing, you know what I mean? But such a respectful guy, great guy, amazing guy. Um, and then I don't know if that was the period, but I remember they tweeted me and said, at Sol Penduga, you are boss zonke. You know? Wow. Oh. And I think it was out of a, a, an interaction we got or I was pushing his song. Like, because you know how I am when I'm really in love with a song. Mm. Like Osama, for example. Mm. I was just, I probably might have done that or have said that, yo, I think Boz is going to be a super huge song, wow. you know? And yeah, man. And But you know me, I disappeared from the game, so I never saw him a lot. But he was always someone you felt like you could... He, he was accessible. accessible, you know? You yeah. could call him, you could talk to him, you could inbox him. Coolest guy ever, bro. So, so here's this article that you shared in the group. Where's this article from? Who shared this, actually? It's written by Nwako Malachi, I think. So it's Sunday World. Sunday, Sunday World. World, yeah. yeah. Nwako Malachi, right? He's like arch nemesis of many celebrities, right, for Sunday World. Is he? Yeah. Is that still a thing? Like, do people still read the Sunday it's, World? Uh, they people do. still do, bro. It still sells, fam. Jeez. If the news are juicy enough, I guess. Yeah. The headline is, I'm sorry for being the one who gives up. Uh, the article is quite long, man. So uh, it says, before shockingly ended his life this week, hip-hop... Mega star Ricky Rick left an emotional message in which he prayed for his uh, wife and children to forgive him for his decision to kill himself. I can't see this article well. Um, The recording superstar who reportedly struggled with uh, severe depression... Sure, I can't read it so well. Okay, yeah, you know what? Because they go in and out of of, of, of the, the, the letter... Right, but I think I'm trying to find the inverted commas. Yeah, Basically, there's the there, there's three people addressed. Yeah. Um. Number one is his wife. His wife. Yeah. And then number two is his his son Mike. Mike. Um. And then also his his daughter Jordan. So this one says, "Dear Bianca, this pain is too much. I don't want you to blame uh, yourself for my life being unbearable." This was the greatest period of my life. You gave me more love than I deserved. Please do not blame yourself. Live your life. Don't hide the light you gave me every day. Um, I'm sorry for being the one who gives who gave up, but I'm in pain and I feel too much to deal with. The voices in my head mm. have never actually gone away. I wish I was stronger, but I'm not. Please forgive me. I love you. That's a snippet of the letter to the wife. Yeah. And then to the son, 
it says the other night Mike said he wants to be just like me not better in a sense of useless achievement but better in choosing the right path for his heart follow your passions my son your world is the world is bigger than anything you could ever imagine mm. i love you sure and then uh the one to his daughter says jordan the best thing that ever happened in my life is you you taught me so much about about life thank you for being good to me thank you for being such an inspiration to me i love you i'm sorry keep each other close love each other please don't blame yourself i can't take the pain anymore i love you sure that's heavy man what's here yeah. bro and i uh, took his life they said in the studio the wife got home the wife had been out got home garage is open Ricky's car is there doors are open and she called called management when she couldn't find him in the house yeah. and i think the studio is like a walk away or something and she, management went to studio and that's where they discovered it this has nothing to do with Ricky Rick this is just a question in general that I want to pose to you guys mm-hmm. okay do you think it's selfish for a parent to take their life good when question they have kids good you know question. what the thing is is because of it's it's hard to say it's selfish or not well from a kid's perspective because now the kids are what are parentless because a parent decided to take their um uh, their life yeah. but also with the with depression it 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 it's like it no longer matters when you are suffering into that extent it doesn't matter that you see how we are all saying oh but you got you've got your wife that you mm. love look at the letter we just read he would love he acknowledged all of them but unfortunately it was not big enough to say okay let me just fight per- perfect that's what i think as well like it's just beyond it was beyond him we i think a lot of people have toyed with the idea remember um <laughs> uh actually <laughs> i wanted to say remember we spoke to a therapist right yeah, yeah. but we want to talk to the therapist in the show later we just oh, yeah, started yeah, yeah, yeah. we, we started with that part yeah, yeah, yeah. it's we coming started, later yes yeah. <laughs> so we got we, uh, two therapists yeah, yes. so trauma trauma counselor trauma counselor well they both it's, yeah. do therapy yeah, yeah. one is based on trauma one is it's more she's more of a psycho she's a psych, clinical psychologist yeah, that's yeah. coming up later yeah, yeah so we spoke to them uh before we recorded this part of the show and they said there's two uh, uh um like thoughts of suicide or, or or phases one it's the idea phase the other one is the impl- implementing and a lot of us have gone through shit at some point mm. and we toyed with it even for a split second but the idea of we've got kids also stops us yeah. now imagine if that depression or darkness was multiplied by a hundred times to the point where it doesn't matter anymore that you have kids mm. and also yes they leave kids behind but they're also human on their own journey Yeah. Your kids are on their own journey. You are on your own journey and right now you are dying inside and you feel like you'll be more useful for them to them dead than alive. And Because I think I think also like when you commit suicide like he's saying there's a lot he's hearing a lot of noises. Mm. It's the only way the noises can stop. It's, stop. it's kind of like relief. True. It's freedom. It's an escape. It's an escape. It's the only way to make it stop. You just want the pain to go away. Yeah, and Costa Rica just said that we all think about our kids but If you get to the point where it doesn't matter even the kids anymore no matter how much you love them and you've told the world that you love them you drop an album called Family Values mm. you're all about this family thing. So if a guy like that can take his life then this shit is real. Yeah. It's a real thing. He's not thinking about ah they're going to be fatherless this and this and that. But he's thinking about they will have a father who's got issues. Who's in do you, pain? Do you think women don't commit suicide as much as men because they're attached more to kids? you know cuz they bear the kids for 9 months there's a an attachment that we can't explain as as ninjas you know what i mean but i think with women i think women speak out more often than men you guys are emotional a, yeah. oh yeah women okay. are, are able to speak out and just you know be more vocal on the issues yes. hence with men they bottle up and find that they suffer but if if you had depression this. would you kill yourself and leave your your kids No, no. It's a, no that's I, a wrong you don't know. Qu- question you see, you see, you don't know because I'm not in that level. Yes. You know? I may go through because we all go through like it's some yes. phases of oh I'm not feeling good today but yes or whatever I've gone through it's not that severe enough to say I want to end my life. Yeah. Like so I, you just don't know what will hit you going forward. Because here's the thing, you got to remember, right? Or that what trauma can just come. Yeah. Yes. I, 
I, I, I doubt, and I highly doubt, because he's spoken about it at length, about his depression. It's not the first time Ricky had suicidal thoughts. Yeah, yes. that's the clip I want to play. Yes, Double yes, HP, yes. Double HP um, in one of his interviews, I think it was on radio, where he told the host that he had tried committing suicide three times yeah. and failed. So the thing is, it's not the first time Ricky thought of committing suicide. There were times where... His kids were the reason he can't. Because mm. like, yo, I can't leave these kids. I can't leave my boy fatherless or my daughter fatherless. But it gets to a point where you can't handle it. So to ask someone, do you think you would do it? They haven't done it yet because of they could still say, my, I need to be there for my kids. Yeah. But sometimes yeah. the pain can be too much. Mm. Yeah. Unbearable. Yeah, a person today who says, ah, he's selfish, killed himself, but he's got kids, may actually have depression in the next few years and you they'll know, know what it means to you get to that know. point. Mm. Exactly. They'll know, then they'll know mm. what it means to get to that point. So we can't Gosh, judge. You can't People judge. like to say, Unimali, why did it do? I was talking to the security guard in my building and it's like, and it, it saddened me. You see the, the vigor that we had in educating the country about HIV and AIDS? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because everybody knows about that yes. shit now. Yes. How you get it, how you can't get it. Yes. We need to do that with depression. With depression. Yeah. It needs to be at the top of, like when you're going to, a kid's going to a life orientation class, it needs to be spoken about. Because it's got no color, no, no skin, no gender. No class. No class. You're poor, you can be depressed. You're yes. rich, you can be depressed. You're white. You're white, you're black, you can be repressed. You are Ricky, a boy who grew up around money, went to Hilton College, you know what I mean? You still end up depressed. Married, single, without kids, still depressed. Let me play this clip I wanted to play uh, where he talks about his, uh, his experience. This is on his podcast. Yeah. Up until 25, you know. And I always said, this is my last album coming back to the question that you asked mm. I always said my, f my first album will be my last album because I didn't expect to make it past 25 mm. I didn't expect to make it past 26 mm. for me I wanted to go out young mm. like Tupac mm. I wanted to die young like Tupac I wanted to die like a Kurt Cobain suicidal thoughts is not anything new to me sure mm. It might seem like, you know, now it's time for every rapper and every artist to talk about having anxiety and being mm -hmm. suicidal. I can, I, can, I can testament to people that I, I, I know what suicidal thoughts are. Mm -hmm. I know what trying to go through with suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. is. I know how to even take it further. Mm -hmm. I know how to take it further. I've been there. I've been mm -hmm. to that dark place. Mm -hmm. You know, we've swallowed the pills. We've mm -hmm. done that. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, I've been through that dark attempts. Coming yeah, back these are attempts. Sure. When I saw that, I thought uh, he had overcome that. That's what he thought, you know? Yeah. When you speak about it and you're thinking, oh, okay, maybe it's just now a story that you can tell to motivate another person. Sure. But look what just happened. And the stats uh, regarding suicide in SA are crazy. Amongst men. Yeah, it's insane. I think we have the second highest. Yeah, in the world. Yeah, we got one of the highest, Ooh, bro. Definitely. Yeah. The first is Russia, but we know why. In Russia. Ah. Uh, no, I'm but, just saying. Yeah, no, I know no what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I stumble upon this um, Facebook. <laughs> Facebook post, guys. Yeah. And it literally talks about, like, so there's another, pro like, prophet, you know, who is just kind of, okay, Lerato Maroja, ne? And let me read it. Yeah. So this is like a public prophecy. Let me say this. I saw rich people and celebrities emotionally drained. In my dream, I saw them crying because I saw some losing their kids, family members, right? Mm -hmm. Some were no longer themselves. There's a storm coming over them. Those people are going through a lot emotionally. They cry day and night, even though they are not showing it. Screenshot this message. Let's keep on praying for them and hope for the best. They really need help. You will remember this prophecy. There's a dark spirit hovering around trying to end lives and steal their peace. Emotionally, they are drained. Magu kang. Hmm. But isn't that for everybody? Yeah. I mean, we just came out of COVID, bro. Yeah, yes. It applies to everyone. Like, a lot of things could apply, like, you know, uh, like that situation to everyone because it's a bit vague. Mm. But listening to that Ricky thing, man, it's so sad saying he'd never thought he'd make it past yeah. 25. Yo. Yeah. Do you know about the 27 Club? No? Oh, yeah. So Google 27, 27 Club. 27 Club. It's art. It's 
people, famous people, who all died, died at 27. 27. For real. Most of them, it's suicide. Like he's, Ricky, when he mentioned Kurt Cobain, mm. I thought of the 27 Club. Kurt Cobain was a rock, on, uh, a rock star. Um, passed away, suicide. Oh. Amy Winehouse is Amy the Winehouse, that's, what I, that's the one she I She also remember. died, suicide, yeah. at 27. Oh. Jimi Hendrix is part of uh, the 27 Club. There's a lot of celebrities, like rock stars, actors, singers, who died at 27, and most of them take their lives uh, due to depression. So mm -hmm. out of curious, so just Google that, just, you know, 27 Club. How much do you think social media plays a part nowadays to it, depression? It, it, it plays a part a lot. Nah. Yeah, you are off social media because you know of the effects of social media, you know? Plays a part, bro. Yeah, um, I think if I... Fam, if, let if me if tell I you read, two, two uh, examples. Uh, 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 the two hashtags examples. under my name, <laughs> I'd commit suicide, dog. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> two examples. If I read the shit they've been saying. Mm. Sure. Shout out to Tets and Gonzo. Tets and Gonzo is a comedian. He inboxed me. He's like, Sola, you okay? I'm like, no, nah, I'm good, man. I'm good, I'm good. Why? Because some people on social media were saying, yeah, you had a hand to solve Penduga in killing him because you joked about that video. Mm. Do you get me? Those kind Ooh. of things. You can't just fucking tell someone that on social media. Some guy inboxed me. It's like, I'm, I'm angry at you, so you made a joke about this and this and that. Now the man is gone. And I'm like, dude, it's banter. And how many people do we joke about? And I'm not joking about, I'm joking about the video and the context of the video. Mm. We all saw what happened in the video. We're all going to make commentary. What was I supposed to say? They looked happy in the video when you could see that the wife was uninterested. Mm. You know, maybe she was cooking. Maybe she needs to do something. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. So people, social media plays a big role. You can't, mm. how do you just tell someone you don't know that they're responsible of someone's no. death hey, and you're going to take that whole fucking yeah. load and put it on my arms? Oh. You know, but because I'm like, whatever, you know, I'm, I found a way of dealing with it. Yeah. You know, it just didn't affect me much. I was mm. like, Psh, please. And I retweeted it on purpose and someone else and, and the people trash that person mm. then there was another motherfucker on social media let me not read this thing out because it's gonna be part of social bullying mm. said the same shit right and then he tweets he said I wish God would have uh, bring back Rick Rick and take Salp and do that yo and, then when, and I, I have the fucking screenshot and I told him I said I've got the screenshot because he deleted it 10 seconds later but I was lucky enough to get it and I screenshotted it and if I tweeted it and then people come for him yo. it's now me socially uh, social media bullying him Bro, why is it on social media? I, it's I crazy. Don't get it, dog. People, yeah, but to me, it doesn't affect me. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, what yeah, yeah. could die? Okay, motherfucker, I'm alive. I saw a screenshot. I'm not going anywhere. From, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't have, I've got a way of dealing with it, but some people can't take it. They can't. I, I looked for Doomy. He dropped a, an amazing freestyle, which I think we'll talk about. And he's not on social media anymore. Mm. Probably because, or on Twitter, I couldn't find him. But if he's not, Stogie. probably because of that. Stogie, yeah. I think social media is not a place for that. any celebrity. It's not. If you want to protect your mental health, not. mental state, stay That's why it. I commend it's people not, who right. decide and say, you know, I'm staying away from social media because it's going to do things to me. I commend, let's say, your Lassizwe, who last year, I think, said they book themselves in, inside um, what is it a mental health facility yes, yes, so those yes. are the things of taking care of yourself and saying okay let me pull out let me just take it easy and get myself back bro together. I can only imagine the things people say because I bumped into some tweet by mistake <sighs> <laughs> and someone said fuck Mac G unsecure little dwarf <laughs> Do you feel how does that make you feel? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I'm, I know I'm not a dwarf, so it doesn't make me feel any type of way, but I'm just saying, like, if you read too much of that shit, it gets to your head, yeah. dog. No matter how strong you are. <laughs> yeah, a friend of mine was shitting on me also, like, you're giving into that energy. So you're strong, I know, but you have no idea. It plays a role, it, it, it erodes mm, yeah. at your soul or, you know, your emotions. And you don't somehow. know what will trigger you. Something exactly. as pathetic as that. Like, every every time, just yeah. be the one that is like, every you know tweet what? is a bullet. Exactly. Literally, yeah. Yes. Every literally. tweet is a bullet. Literally. But anyway, this is Dineo Ranak on WhatsApp. Uh, I screenshotted this. I hope she doesn't mind me reading this out. She says, I despise that people create I despise the people that created social media. I truly do. I despise the fact that now industries we work for undervalue you if you don't have social media. It's a criteria now. Mm. A space that fuels misery for many has been now made a criteria. Mm. If I told my employers or clients that I'm deleting my accounts, they would freak out. Not thinking how much the damage it's causing me mentally is making me freak out. 
Oh. No one really gives a shit about mental well-being. Most of the people I've told I'm deleting my accounts have advised me not to because work this, work that. What about my fucking mental health? I hate that space. I freaking hate social media and how we are professionally coerced to have it. I don't want it. My mind can't handle it. She facts. That's facts. And that's facts. And that's messed up for employers oh. to cause you on the radio. I'm here to broadcast, man. You know, I'm not there to tweet. Yeah. But I think Metro would be happy if she deactivated. They would see her <laughs> dancing, dancing oh. on the stationery. Oh. On, on the office. No, the that's oh, it's the office stationery or whatever. Yeah. yeah, you know. But she's right, though. And it's messed up if you work. I mean, it's what we were saying about that lady needing a thousand fans or followers to get a job, you know? Yeah. It's a toxic space. Why should it be a a prerequisite for me to be on this platform where, mm. pe- where I'm getting bullied every day and people are shitting on me? All I want to do is broadcast or all I want to do is make music. If you commit suicide and you don't die, is that uh, attempted murder? <laughs> I'm just asking. Well, it's attempted for? suicide. Oh, it's attempted, attempted suicide. suicide. Okay. You can't, the, murder you can't, is homicide? Yeah. Killing yourself is suicide. Okay. So it can't be attempted homicide because yeah. you're not killing somebody else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can't murder yourself. It's just it's suicide. All right. Hey, moving on, man. Ukraine and Russia. Woo! Hey! Woo! Bro, hey. I spent the whole week scratching my head trying to figure out what the like, fuck hey, is going hey, on. They're gonna need me to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling, right? <laughs> hey, they're gonna need me to talk about this. <laughs> fuck. Now you're, you're there reading about. Donetsk and Luhansk and, and Minsk, Minsk. Min, Minsk agreement. You're like, you, EU, NATO, NATO, NATO like, NOTA. Right? Because it's harder, like, you're the biggest podcast now. You need to, you need to be touched now, you know? It's, yeah, I see you. But I got the perfect analogy. Do you? Yeah? Yeah. Russia is. Kanye West. Oh. Ukraine oh. is Kim Kardashian. Oh. Oh, I've got a yeah, similar analogy. Yeah. yeah. And then for USA, in- Germany, all those other countries are Pete Davidson. Oh. Ooh. 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 And ooh. so Kanye doesn't want Kim to move on. He mm-hmm. wants her back. But yes, she wants to move they used on to, to be Pete. together. Yeah, oh. she she wants to move on with Pete. Yeah. So Russia is the toxic ex. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The only difference is between Kim K and you and Ukraine is that Ukraine actually wants to join the West. (laughs) 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 Okay. And Pete Davidson is dropping bombs, dog. Apparently he's packing, dog. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah. For real? Yeah, Pete hey, Davidson. Hey, you must hey, check out hey. girls who've been with him. Apparently he's packing, bro. For real? Yeah, yeah. But isn't it similar to like, you know when Namibia gained independence from SA in the 90s? And then like now Cyril's saying, we want you back. Hold on. Hold on. Namibia gained in the 90s? Hmm. Yeah. Namibia was, we were, we were, control, we were controlling Namibia in the 90s? Oh, when was it? Hey man, anytime. Did we ever had control of Namibia? Yes. How so? And if oh, we did, it definitely in the nineties, fam. <laughs> hey, nineties. I was okay, in primary I, school. Man. I could have gotten the dates wrong, but they they gained independence from us. Yeah. Oh, for real? Yes. Yeah, from apartheid South Africa. Damn, fam. Yeah. I did, I'm oh. getting schooled. Is it yeah, the whole yeah. Transvaal kind of the? The whole trans the Transvaal. Which what nah, is Transvaal was like a. It's okay. Like a whole. Big province, yeah, yeah, where Paul Kruger was like the. Yeah. So, but it's the same thing. Like Cyril's saying, we want you back now. Y- yeah, l- yeah, p- pretty much. Because I mean, there used to be the um, Soviet Union. Soviet Union, right? Where all all these countries, well, that now countries were one block. With Russia. With Russia, you know, being the biggest land block, mm. um, Ukraine was one of the most the pivotal. You know, parts of the, the the Soviet Union. You know what I mean, as far as Let me the economy, oh, a lot yeah. of things, agriculture, the oh, culture. Whole so now, ninety one, yeah. Ukraine then becomes independence. But you know, like how in the northwest, a lot of people they speak uh, Setswana, 
right? Because they share a border with Botswana. Botswana, yeah. So the east part of Ukraine has a lot of Russian-speaking Ukrainians, you know? Oh. So in, 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 in Ukraine, there's people who are... The west side is pro the west. The east, they speak more Russian more and Russian. stuff like that, yeah. So now Ukraine wanting to join the EU. Yeah, it was 1990, motherfucker. 21st of March. Damn. Yeah. Let me see that. Namibia was granted his independence. South African government under the UN Brokered Peace Initiative finally agreed to give up control of Namibia. And on the 21st of March, 1990, Namibia was granted his independence. Hey. It's, it's independence. It's, yeah, yeah. It's dope, mm. man. Oh. Yeah, yeah I'm seeing that. From yeah. South From, Africa. Um, SAHistory.org. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, must, wow, must read, guys. Damn. Oh. <laughs> hey. Hey, bro. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Now I need to consume more Namibian. <laughs> His, all I consume is Binduk. You know, like, when it comes to Namibia, <laughs> you know, I must read. Hey, nice hey. one, dog. Nah, well you schooled done, us. Well yeah. done. But anyway, you continue. Schooled. Yeah, so, 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 so. Basically, what's happening was, so there's been like a rebel group on the eastern part that shares the border with Russia of Ukraine. You know, that's literally been running that eastern part. Um, I think the two main cities are, are, are Luhansk and Donetsk. I'm, oh, not, yes, sure. Yes, I'm yes. not sure about the pronunciation, yeah. so Donetsk. Yeah. yeah. And then these groups, in 2013, <laughs> they shot down a plane. <laughs> and then that's when the fucking Ukrainian military said, fuck off, you guys. Yeah. Then there's been like, you know, battles going on. But they... It's like a rebel group, but they're literally fighting against the whole country and they're managing. So Ukraine knew that, no, man, these motherfuckers are getting weapons from the Russians, from the border mm. of Russia. You know what I mean? So now R Russia is trying to take also, the, it's a land dispute, essentially, yeah, yeah. that part. And now the EU, it's weird because they're saying cease fire so that they can join, uh, I mean, uh, Ukraine, so they can join the EU. Mm. But the EU is like, you won't join till there's no war in your country. Because mm -hmm. mm. if there's war, what happens when there's war? Mm. All the Ukrainians are going to flee into, into Europe if they join the EU. And did you see they're not letting uh, uh, African... Black people. Black people onto the trains. Oh, yeah, I've, 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 see, I've seen some racist uh, Some Ukrainian racist stuff there. is going exactly. on. Exactly. Right? Black Africans are stuck in there, bro. So first, when you get to the trains, it's first the Ukrainians that get on the trains mm -hmm. and then the black people. Mm. They've been removing actually, black people out of buses. Like, yeah. You know, first disgusting. priority is the white people. Like, it's There's so actually some disgusting. students in SA who are stuck in Ukraine from SA. We should talk to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we should reach out if anyone reach out to us. And yeah. Talk to them. So that's pretty much it. And if you notice, have you noticed that Europe hasn't been vocal? Yeah. A lot of countries, only America. Yeah. Who's like, if you touch Ukraine, you know, shit will happen. Yeah. Right? Because Russia supplies so many European countries with gas. Yeah, Germany being Germany, one. Germany, most importantly, yeah. exactly. There's mm -hmm. a gas pipe, a, a gas line there. Mm -hmm. So if now they start a war with against Russia, it, it affects them as well, you know, economically. Yeah. So that's partly the gist of the whole thing, man. How's it going to affect us? Is it just the oil? I'm not sure how it's going to affect us. Mm. And uh, I saw Nalidi Pando saying, yeah, Russia must... must <laughs> have... I'm not going to do when Russia comes, guys. <laughs> when Vladimir Putin comes, hey. this is what he He's already here, bro. He was in Centurion yesterday. There was a tremor there. That was Putin, for sure. You see? <laughs> you see? He's landing. He's landing. <laughs> Who do you call? <laughs> Looks call those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think South Africa's not a mall. But I think Kanka lacks. <laughs> Yeah. He probably he, he probably got, got some Russian accent hidden somewhere <laughs> in his vault of accent. <laughs> Vladimir, let us talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but hey man, let's stay out of it. Oh yeah, bro. by the way, he's stay coming this Thursday. We oh, shot an episode on Tanta Logs. Beautiful, so beautiful. <laughs> oh man, what a great oh. fucking genius. What a great guy. What, what a, a smart a, guy. A smart guy, man. You are. Spoke so fondly, loves hip hop. Yeah. yeah. Spoke so fondly of City Lights and, and, and Pro Kid. Ah, oh, it's amazing. That's you dropping know, this Thursday. He put city lights on, you know that? Yeah, yeah. He didn't tell the story, though. Yeah. He put yeah. city lights on. But isn't it weird how there's so many wars in Africa, but no one talks about them? Like, no one cares. <gasps> True, right? 
But everybody knows what underwear Putin there's is wars. wearing right yeah. now. Yeah, there's war literally right now. There's a civil war in Cameroon. Yes. There's the um, the southern part of Cameroon that they call themselves Ambazonia and they want to be recognized as a sovereign state. They want their freedom, mm-hmm. right? Um, and the La Republique, which is the Republic in, fr- in French. It's the, the, what we know as Cameroon, you know, uh, uh, doesn't want to let them have their freedom. Mm. And then there's also another one in, in Nigeria. There's Biafran. The civil war in Ethiopia. The Ethiopia as Civil well. war in Ethiopia as well. Yeah. Israel, Palestine. Israel, Palestine. Exactly. And no one ever talks nah. about this shit. No, nah, no one cares. When America, when NATO was in Libya looking for Gaddafi and eventually got killed by his own people, you know what I mean? Like, no one questions what are these people doing in this what country. Are these doing? When they were in Afghanistan for the longest time on war on drugs, no one ever questions, right? But when. Uh, European countries. Uh, when, 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 yeah, when Russia, mm. you know, uh, goes into Ukraine, because I think there was an agreement also that you can't have joint NATO. Like Russia does not want Wasn't America the- setting up, you know, a, a, a military bases by their border. That was and that's Minsk, literally the that reason Minsk. why. Agreements, right? Yes, the Minsk ag- agreements. Yes, there, there were two Minsk agreements, mm. which in Minsk, which has so been the capital like of Belarus. So they felt like they violated that agreement, and yes. that's why it, you've, it has led to all of this as well. Yeah. And even now, they want a meeting, uh, Russia and Minsk, but Ukraine is like, we're willing to talk and cease fire, but not in Minsk. I don't know why not in Minsk. But yeah. Have you seen the sanctions? The sanctions are lit. In Russia. Yo, the sanctions are crazy. <clears throat> uh-uh. Even Roman Abramovich had to step down as um, CEO Chelsea. or whatever of Chelsea. Oh, you for real? Yeah, he's down. Yeah, he's th- banned from the UK. Ooh. Can't even enter there. Oh, for real? Yeah. But that, that's not Russia. That's just maybe his corruption things or whatever. Is no, that, it's because that, he's, oh. he's affiliated. The oh, oligarchs, he is. Yeah. He's, an, he's an oligarch. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. one of the guys who got rich and through corruption. What's happening on today's episode? Hey, are you Meg Gia? Hey, my soul. Yeah. <laughs> You decided to read, man. You know? <laughs> I'm ra- and I'm running on three hours sleep. But I love, I, I love the schooling I'm getting. I love the schooling I'm getting. Vladimir, Vladimir Max G. Vladimir Max G. He's putting you on. He's, put, he's putting me on. Huh? I love it, dog. Uh, I love it. <laughs> the, the Champions League is no longer in Russia. The final it was meant to be in Russia. It's no longer in Russia. It's going to go to Paris. Okay, good. And do you think... Did her, has Russia qualified for all the, they could even remove Russia maybe FIFA who knows from the World Cup qualifiers yeah That's FIFA has cut all ties with the sponsorship they had they had a sponsorship with Gazprom uh, it's a gas company yes I know Russia. Gazprom yeah, 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 yeah. hey I'm still sore <laughs> 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 I know gas from <laughs> Dope and, and you know the Ukrainian president Who used to be a comedian I think you've mentioned it once Yes I've mentioned it once yeah. uh, Volodymyr Volodymyr Yeah Right yeah Volodymyr yeah. Zelensky Or something yes. like Yes Vol- Volodymyr and Vladimir It's the same thing It's mm. just the one is like Ukrainian And the other one is oh, like Russian, Russian But same name Anyway shout out to Junior Kanye His book is finally out Oh Ooh. Nice yeah. Junior Kanye We love Junior oh, man. Man. <laughs> I hope you write about that kind of book Shout out to him Man. <laughs> uh, also, Brian Abana sold his first NFT hey, painting How about for 150,000 rand. Hey, hey, Brian. There's big money in hey, NFT, bro. bro. I need to, this NFT thing. Yeah, it's coming, hey. bro. And you can, like, make, uh, make tweet an NFT. And yeah, how We still don't understand, sure. but we'll figure it out as time goes. Also, shout out to Buster929. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah, he released an album. Oh. Yeah, called Undisputed. And the album has beauty. 16 tracks Just like his type <laughs> uh, Under 16 uh, <laughs> Under 16 It's a grand uh, Under 16 <laughs> Does it feature any of the ladies or girls? Hey, I don't know man I don't know He album. didn't make a statement now right? Because we were seen with another very young girl But he didn't make a statement that we recorded What he's doing people. is so distasteful Yes, yes. Mm. He's the undisputed champ of under 16s <laughs> How? Yeah. Hey, but it's it's I don't get men liking but it's preference I guess right even if they barely legal but it's not like right. young girls ah, I just you can't don't condone that shit you can't even I'm not condoning it you can't even say like, it's preference dog it can't even be preference it's not no. right no 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 it's this is vile are they under 18 morals? are they illegal or are they just 18 that's what I said I thought they were like just barely legal hey man they just look young bro and exactly I don't yeah, get that like young, how do you bro. see that a flat chested girl 
body shape like a boy even, you know, just a little girl. And how do you now see that one? Just, yes, she's at a party, we get it. She's consuming alcohol, but it doesn't mean now you should further lead her down into the, the path she's on because she's mm. clearly a lost kid. I mean, you can't be, you can't be 16 and at a club, bro, at a, she's saying I'm a partying, drinking. Yeah. That's just, I don't want to preach, I don't preach, but all right, guys, there's something wrong. That's not okay, man. Yeah. There's something wrong with that, bro. Hey man, I came across this too late, but I saw uh, um, I was reading an article. Uh, Pornhub released stats from oh, yeah? uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. Do you guys want to go through them? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Them, yeah. Okay, of course, cool. we want to go through them. I'll tell you the category, and then let me know if you want me to go through that. They've got. <clears throat> let's start here. They've got most search terms of 2021. Do you want to know that? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hentai, Japanese, lesbian, and MILF, and Pinay. Okay. What is, what's hentai? I don't know. It's weird. There's always Japanese, like, on the first page, you know? <laughs> I don't know now in 2022, but, like, last time I searched, like, 2017. What's Pinay? There was always, like, you know, oh, Japanese. No, There's something special about Japanese porn that I don't get. Yeah. Because, to me, it's that whole thing. The girls, the women, they just look not right to me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like... Things are small. Just to me, it's like, I man, you know. So I, I've never, never went down that rabbit hole. Uh, top twenty countries by traffic: United States, number one, way up there. Of course. Oh. United Kingdom, Japan, France, Italy. We're not even in the top twenty, guys. Doctors expensive in South Africa, well man. Done. Yeah. Well so many done, people don't even have Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's just the country we live in. But and and, and Sondesa.com filed for bankruptcy, so. Hey, Sondeza. Hey, Sondeza. What happened to Sondeza? Hey, Sondeza. <laughs> I remember Tau. Hey, Sondeza. That was our first, like, you know, <laughs> locally black owned pawn something. <laughs> Sondeza. You know Sondeza? I remember the name. I don't know the site. Mm. Favorite times to watch porn. <laughs> Take a guess. Take, give me a guess, because lady. Obviously, night time, midnight. Okay. I'd say work hours. Midnight, dog. Yeah. Oh, for real? Yeah, midnight. From 11 p.m. until 1 a.m. Sure. Yeah. Ungodly hours. Most viewed categories. Most viewed. Japanese, lesbian, ebony, hentai, milf, and anal. Hmm. Okay. What's this hentai? hentai. Right, let's Google hentai, bro. I gotta know what hentai is. Maybe yeah, we're missing what's out. hentai, bro? I think maybe we're missing out. <laughs> Hentai. Maybe it's a new position. <laughs> yeah, hentai. Okay, let me. I don't want to see them. Hope something <laughs> disgusting involving like yeah. animals or something. Because people hentai? are weird out there. A genre of Japanese manga and anime characterized by overtly sexualized characters and sexually explicit images and plots. So it's like anime. Oh, it's oh, anime. Japanese oh, so. oh, anime. That's there. <laughs> wow. Here's the world's most viewed categories. Uh, in America, it's lesbian and ebony. South America, it's hentai. Africa, the whole of Africa, it's ebony. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Why yeah, because ebony is black, right? Black. Yeah, yeah, I want to see no, black. Okay. What? So oh, these people are supporting their the own. Oh, Aya's here. Oh, Aya, oh, Aya, Aya, Aya. Oh. Yeah, the oh, hangover's I, gone. I, I gave it to Mchafa. You better Mchafa. have brought us meat from the Shisanyam. <laughs> <laughs> and then there by Russia, it's hentai. Anal. Which country is this? Come show me which country this is. There's anal there. Which country is this? What does that look like? It's Europe, obviously. Yeah, but this is... That looks like... Russia? Oh, no. It can't be Russia. That's Russia. Or is that Asia? No, no that's, that's Asia. Asia. That's Asia. Because yeah. you see, yeah. that's... Uh, 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 um, Russia, man. This is uh, it's Russia. Russia, ne? Yeah, that's Russia, bro. Yeah. That's Russia. In India, it's Indian porn. <laughs> <laughs> Indian porn. I love how people are supporting their own, okay? Like, yeah. Africa. Yeah, of course, though, but I mean, nothing wrong with that. Most searched gay terms. Twink, femboy, hentai, straight, black. Whoa. Whoa. What's twink now? What's twink? Damn. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's find out, actually. Let's search. Let's, let's find out what's twink. Because okay. someone maybe out there wants to know, you know? Yeah. Uh, twink is a gay slang for a young man in his late teens to early 20s whose traits may include general physical attractiveness, a slim to average build, and a youthful appearance that may barely an older age. So, Mohao. Mm. So, they like that. Mm. Mm. Mm? Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> Most viewed categories it's... by gender. Men's favorites, Japanese, MILF, mature, ebony, hentai, anal. 
Women's favorites is lesbian. Wow, you guys like lesbian porn? I, Women. No, I don't really consume pornography. Ne. I don't really like it. Yeah. Oh. Because it just stays in your head or whatever you see, and it's yeah. I don't. I hey like man, to be. I, I, I find it me hard to. It doesn't stay in my head. Like I wipe when I'm done. <laughs> So it doesn't stay in my head. I find it hard to masturbate now because I feel like my ancestors are watching, dog. You know, your like ancestors. how Tess said your grandmother's with you? Mm. Yeah, you can't masturbate when your grandmother's right next to you. Oh. <laughs> so I got to check. Grandmother, you here? But they will, you won't know. Oop. <laughs> Show yourself. <laughs> hey, dog. Hey, man. But they got to understand. But that's the thing, right? Didn't our ancestors masturbate? From the dead. They did. Man. That's the thing. I think it's all in your head. It's all in your head. But you, the thought of when masturbating you're alone, from your grandmother, you are dog. Alone. She's human. Do you think your granny didn't know you were masturbating when she was on earth? She knew. Yeah. When she knocked on your door at 1 a.m. <laughs> to ask you if are you prepared for a school trip? <laughs> Can't you on a different trip and you've locked the door? Do you think she didn't know? Do you think you're, you are her first grandson? <laughs> Yeah. When you started locking yourself in in the bathroom, yeah. when before you would do your thing with the door open, yeah. you think she didn't know you were masturbating? Did you ever get caught? Me and my mom would walk in, right? Yeah. Walk in. But I knew that first you're going to push Mike, the, Mike, yeah. first you're gonna push the door, yeah. and then that's when I go still. <laughs> right? The gap between the door open and the lights coming on. Yeah. I know I have to stiffen up. Like, <laughs> you know, but I'm always crouching like... You know, cause I do it like on the side, you know, like <laughs> covered. Cause there was no key there. She could come in any time. I think she did though, cause yeah. I, I think there were like sometimes like some stains on the blankets. Yeah, and she'd pick it up. Yeah, oh. she'd pick. And also, I think the one time I went to go sh- take a bath, and I forgot the lotion in the bed. <laughs> so I think she knew that. <laughs> Now you're so focused about going to school. You're getting ready. That's how much I love school, mom. You know? Nah, she definitely knew. They know, eh? Yeah. Like, mother, I think even chiller mothers with teenage kids, ask them. They know. Yeah. They see. Because we're clumsy as men. We're clumsy. Yeah. We can't even cheat without getting caught. Of course. You know what I mean? So imagine ah. masturbating when you're 13. Yeah. You can't outsmart your mom or your granny. Yeah. They knew you were doing it. They knew. Did you ever get caught, ghost lady? What? What? Masturbating? Uh, How? What? No. Zero. No. Mm. I, uh, I don't know, man. I'm still waiting for my wet dream. That's, that's seven. <laughs> 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 After two kids. Wow. Does your son wake up with hard ones? Like, <laughs> you wow, <man>. imagine. <laughs> See, dwarf. <laughs> In your sexual are, life, it's, it's, it's dwarf. We are, we are waiting for it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> apparently SA has its very own Tinder swindler. Influencer and business person Amon Amoleno Namara. Uh, is, 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 no. He's a guy who's a Tinder swindler in SA. What is him. he saying? What does he do? What's his... He's just scamming women. Yeah, are you serious? Yeah, allegedly. I don't know if it's true or not, but yeah. To I give mean, him money. Yeah. Yeah. Aya, oh, yeah. nice of you to join us, hey? How's All the right. hangover, bro? How's the family emergency? Sorted? <laughs> Sorted? Did you get the meat? <laughs> yeah, we saw, did you bring the meat from the Shisanyama? <laughs> I saw your tweet saying, saw hey, your, Shisanyama. Saw your post. Oh, your, your post on, on, I think, it was WhatsApp status. <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway. Anything uh, else you want to talk about, dog? Uh, Stogie T. Yeah, yeah. Stogie T dropped a freestyle, Coke, Diet Coke freestyle. <laughs> Guys, Stogie T... And I'm serious, no jokes. Like, why isn't he being made the poet laureate of South Africa? What's a poet laureate? It's a poet that has been assigned by government to write poems on special occasions. Oh. Um, the previous poet laureate who passed away a few years ago was Earl Sweatshirt's dad. Oh. You know him. Uh. You know Earl Sweatshirt from uh. Odd Future? Uh. He's a rapper from America. Like, his mom, because... Khosetile married Balega was a stepmom is Balega Mbete. Is it? Earl Sweatshirts. Yeah, you, who knows Earl? You know Earl, yeah. What so about Robert Boy's dad? I'm talking bully. Yeah. I don't know if he was poet laureate at some point, but he may have been, I'm not sure. But I know the, the one, the last I knew was uh, Ntate Korapit, Khosetile. Because Tumi is an amazing 
writer, man. He wrote the whole thing is is about around depression and wow. and, and self care, you know. Like Dumi is yo, bro. That guy writes so amazingly, man. Like for real, for real. I, I don't see why he can't be. Mm. He's proven himself. He's incredible with the pen. Best rapper we have in South Africa by far. When mm. we're talking about raps, raps and bars, sure. check out. Um, Diet Coke freestyle by Doom. It's incredible. And then he plays a video of Ricky, um, where he was. They were talking about searching for MCs on Insta on an Insta Live. It's so beautiful. Because yeah. you remember he had signed Ricky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Motif. A motif. Records, yes, yeah. yes. He did a a, a a freestyle on Sway in the morning. <laughs> Doomy. Mm. Oh yes, yes, yes. I That's that. Al and them. Hey. Al Shabab and them ish. Yeah. yeah, I remember that freestyle. Yeah. Nah, Doomy guys must get his flowers. Stogie. Must Truly Stogie. get his flowers, Stogie bro. Tea. Cause lady, I want to shout about? out um, Rich Mnisi oh. for his collaboration with Adidas. Oh, oh, oh beautiful. Oh, Rich Mnisi. Oh. Rich Mnisi, oh. guys. Do you know my woman was watching the Ranakas? Yeah. Or Dineo's reality show. Yeah. yeah. When it started, Rich Mnisi was the Dineo's PA or something. Are you for but real? But she was working, she used to, he used to dress her. Oh, Whoa. Yeah, look at him now. What? Damn. Oh. Bro, no, shut up. Whoa, that's Damn. Beautiful. Keep going, Aya. I mean, Simpiwe. Okay. <laughs> Pressa. <laughs> Pressa. <laughs> the future is bright. <laughs> <laughs> you might end up on Joe Rogan's podcast. Eh? You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get Aya's got family emergencies. Hey. <laughs> Every weekend. Every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's dope, man! It is so dope. So the collection is like inspired by his Tonga re- um, heritage. So it's so beautiful. I really want to get oh, myself all that Tonga. merch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's hey, a he's man. a Tonga oh, man. And Limpopo people, uh, y- y'all gotta step up, though. What are you Zulu people doing? What's going on? Hey, hey, hey. you cross us, eh? Pedis, <laughs> Likai. <laughs> Pedis are there also in Limpopo. Look at you. Oh yeah, isolating shit. your own. <laughs> Hey, I'm a vet. That one born, eh? Hey, yeah, I feel I'm a vet. I'm a presidency now, hey. Anyway, where's the drum roll? Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the first weeks. ever. Mm. No, not weeks, so where's the drum roll? Podcast and chill special happening in Pulukwane, 20th of March. At my uncle's uh, lodge, Irex. Oh, Irex. Oh, yes, Love that place. yes. We're going to be joined. Are you ready for this? Live podcast. And she's also gonna DJ after that, the one and only Dineo Ranaka. Renox! Renox! Yeah, Tebu Khotavijan is also gonna join us. Oh! Oh. Yeah, she's coming through. So tickets are available. I'll put. the ticket thing in the description. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can start buying tickets. Uh, what else I got to mention? Grandeur is back in stock. Visit grandeurgin.com. Deliveries available nationwide. And also uh, on the table, is it coming back this week? Uh, no, no, no. You remember it's bi weekly. So yeah. we're skipping this week and we'll have another episode. So what's coming this week? Is it Car Podcast, uh, City Girls? What's dropping this week? Is it just us? It's just us, City Girls? City is Girls. An episode for City Girls that's coming up. City, City. Okay. Oh, City Girls is coming Sweet. up. Dope. Cool. All right, so as we all know, it's been a heavy week for the whole country, Ish. man. Hectic. Uh, so Ish. we decided Ish. to rope Ish. in Ish. Nompumelelo Prudence Kubeka. She's a clinical psychologist. Mm. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, madam. Nice, nice, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. What's the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist? So a psychologist doesn't give out medication. A psychiatrist mm. gives out medication. Ah. Yeah. But we can both do therapy. And then when do you become doctor? And I do a PhD, nice. which is in the process. Ah, oh. nice. <laughs> nice, nice. Nice. Uh, we're also joined by Buitumelo Buikuzo. Yes, Buikuzo, yes. You are a trauma counselor. That is correct. Uh, and what's oh. the difference from what she does? So, with trauma counselors, we do short term solution focused therapy. Um, so, it's also clinical based, but once it's quite severe, then I would refer to Numpumelelo, um, especially for people that are not really kind of functioning with day to day stuff. Yeah. Then would refer to to a clinical psychologist, and yeah, that's how it um, works. And you work with a lot of people, ne? Lots and lots of people, man. Gang, gang people. Teenagers, corporates. Teenagers, kids, corporates, young adults, adults. Um, yeah, communities. Yeah. 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 All right. So, so please, uh, we want to unpack like mental health. Uh, what's going on? Mental illness. What is that? Like, what's what's the four one one there? 
What's a mental illness? Mm. Oh, okay. So there's different types of mental illnesses. I guess if we look at it, what is mental health? Yeah. You know, and how do we differentiate between a person that is mentally healthy and a person that is not? You know, like if we look at things like depression and anxiety is that we all become sad. We all have that space where we become hopeless and all of that. And even with anxiety, we experience fear when we have like new changes in our lives. But with someone that has a mental illness like depression or anxiety, what happens is that it goes to the extreme. So it's an everyday feeling type of thing, you know. So with a mentally healthy person, it would be a person that is always able to reflect that they don't need medication to deal with certain life situations. They are able to um, live an everyday life and be able to deal with, um, have coping skills to deal with certain things that happen in life without actually now it affecting their everyday life and their work life and all of that to a point that they're not eating, they're not socializing, they're not enjoying stuff that they used to enjoy. So it's a matter of being um, mentally healthy means being internally healthy. Ah, You know, it's like having that room within yourself that you have cleaned up and you have that room to come back to that has the skills that to say, oh, I lost my job. Okay, I'm feeling depressed. What do I need? Or a relationship just ended. What do I need to do? Instead of like going to the extreme because the response is also, it also shows on whether the person is mentally healthy, a sense of a type of behavior that happens, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. So like if we speak about a mentally healthy person, we speak about a person that is able to take accountability yep. for the stuff that they have done without having to project to others. Mm. There's people that who would be saying that, but you made me do this mm, instead mm. of actually taking the responsibility for stuff that they need to be doing. If ever we were to use an analogy of um, this is like your room. Yeah. How does your room look internally? Because if your room is not clean internally, you then project externally. Okay. You know? Which happens a lot on social media. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are miserable. That's why they say hurt people hurt people. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Hurt people hurt people. But also, um, it's so easy for us to wear makeup and make... Um, and present a certain facade. Of course. That's when internally hurts. we are not really happy. We wear masks. Mm. Yeah. Tell me about, uh, uh, why is it taboo in the black community to speak about depression and mental illness and, and all that stuff? Look, I mean, if we have to kind of look at our history as as a people as well, you know, I mean, I remember a couple of years back having certain uh, prominent people saying, "What it's very much a, a Caucasian thing. It's a very yes. white thing, yes. you know. Uh, Even if you uh, go to the rehab centers, it's mostly white people. 100%. Mm. But let's think, I get, we can always bring it back to a sense of how many of us in our households have these conversations, you know, how many people within our households even know whether we have a history of depression within our, our family or anxiety or schizophrenia or whatever the case may be so I think it also just comes from possibly a lack of of insight and awareness you know um, accessibility I mean as a country are we punting such things are we having these conversations within our schools within our households uh, within our social settings at the end of the day so obviously when you come through and you tell your mother your grandmother your aunt your uncle your father Hore I'm depressed they'll be like how you've got a roof over your head you've got food on the table you know we've got school we're paying school fees you've got clothes so, you know, they're associated with very much external stuff without really realizing it's, 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 it's a real thing, you know. What's and it's common? biological as well. For real? Yeah, like there's, uh, and I'd love for Mpumi to unpack that a bit, that, wow. you know, there are biological components in terms of just hormonal imbalances in the body. Yes. So if your body's not secreting particular hormones, you know, the way it's supposed to, that can easily, you know, um, perpetuate trauma can even trigger depression, anxiety, mm-hmm. and all sorts mm-hmm. of things. So you could go through a house breaking, or kokas, you live in the hood, whatever, mm. House breaking, you're predisposed to depression. Mm. That can easily be a trigger, a trigger. in itself, mm. you know. And again, like I said, the secretion of particular hormones in the body and all of those, and that impacts your brain and how you function. So people not knowing that, oh, no, you don't wake up and you choose to be depressed. Mm. No, you don't just wake up and choose to be depressed. No, not at all. 
I we guess also uh, another thing, just to add a bit on that, is yeah. the language that we use yeah. as black people. Yeah. You know, um, I've heard so many people that would say, yo, I'm so happy today. I wonder what's going to go bad. Please. Because that's the language that we use, you oh. know. When someone passes away, we are told, no, you mustn't cry because this person will not go well to heaven mm. and those type of things, you know. So, and another thing is men don't cry. A boy that be strong, mm. be strong, you mm. know, that type of thing. And that type of language can also result in someone then suppressing and not sharing certain emotions because the language and the narrative that we use as black people is so dismissive. It's like avoid your feelings. You know, you need to be happy. You know, why are you always so negative? Not actually realizing that there needs to be a balance between your positive and your negative emotions. Mm -hmm. But it's like, yo, this person is so negative. You know, that type of thing. So now you start to dismiss your own feelings. Even when you are feeling sad, you can't really say that I'm feeling sad. Instead of that, you use toxic positivity to try and be happy because now you're not supposed to be sad. Mm. Wow. And then is it a chronic illness? What? Depression. Or mental illness, mental health? It depends. It depends on um, a person and also on certain circumstances. As uh, we do Melo mentioned that there's certain things that can result in someone having short-term depression. There's people that have long-term depression. There's different types of depressions that a person can have depending on the genetics and also on the situations and the traumas. Can it be um, hereditary, like passed down from... Dad, yeah. uncle, for real? Yes, yes. Mm. But, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. One hundred percent, and that's why I get it. I think as a as as a people as well, not knowing who you know your 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 grandmother, your great grandmother, your grandfather might have had this. I mean, you know, a lot of people just wow. don't have that insight, and then you start seeing a pattern when you're sitting down as a family to be like, but this behavior doesn't start with this child. Mm. If we look at you know Uncle Smang Mang and Aunt Smang Mang or, or Goko or whatever the case is, there's a bit of a of a pattern here. So yes, it definitely can be hereditary. So. The, Yep. Some people, like, they're, they're not sure, right, if they're depressed or not, but they know that they don't, they're not okay. Like, when do you know that you need help or you need, like, you know, to talk to someone? Yeah, Is there, like some a, of the signs? A, a, yeah. yeah, some boxes that you tick. Like, I'm always home. I don't open my curtains in the morning. I'm always whatever. Like, what kind of things should I look out for? Always out. masturbating, you know, things like Always that. Always masturbating, Ooh. exactly. It's and not cleaning up your cum. <laughs> 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 like a clinical psychologist. <laughs> You're not being clinical. <laughs> like, for real, like, how do I know? You know, because most people think they're depressed. They're not sure. Like, what's the sure proof way of knowing? I think when, as soon as you don't feel like yourself, you know, there's mm. points that you un you actually feel that I'm not myself. I always say that to my patients, you need, before you can say good morning, baby, Dali, or whatever, you need to say good morning to yourself, you know, check on how you slept and if you are okay, you know, because if you don't do the check-ins, you wake up every day and you don't know, um, you don't know how it feels for you to be okay and not be okay because you don't know your own body, mm. you know. So when someone wow. starts to feel... Um, depressed, they have a low mood. They have like feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, insomnia or sleeping too much or low appetite or just eating too much and they don't enjoy the activities that they used to do before. You know, um, sometimes isolating themselves and sometimes having suicidal thoughts. Mm. So those things then come to play where death doesn't feel as scary anymore. You know, there's so many thoughts of actually saying, if I drink this water and I die, it wouldn't be an issue. Sure. You death know? feels like freedom, like an escape. Yes, yes. And also I think when it comes to, to suicide, again, there's suicidal ideation and then there's intent. Mm -hmm. So ideation would be thoughts of suicide, but you haven't really planned yeah. on yeah. how yes. you're going to go to. You know what I mean? I think yes. we've all, everyone here can, can really attest that We've all had those moments where we're like, you know what, yeah. actually, I'm tired, man. Like, mm. I really just feel like it could just end, you know. So that's ideation. That's the ideation kind of stage. And then intent is when you actually sit and you're like, what are the options? How can I go about doing okay. it? And people always think that, you know, people take their lives when... Um, you know, when they've reached like rock, rock, rock bottom. But at that point, you don't even have the capacity or the capability of taking your own life. It's when people seem like they're getting much better, where they actually have the energy 
to now follow through with oh, the planning of taking okay. their own lives. So that's why people are like, ah, oh, but then they seem like they were getting so yeah, much better. Yeah, yeah, there was yeah. progress. And at that moment, that's when then they, they take their life. So that's when they're most volatile. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Because yeah. you think it's the other way around, right? Yeah, yeah. You think like when they rock, rock bottom, uh, at their lowest, it's when... I wanted to come to you. Uh, you get a lot of teenagers. What's the trigger? What's the cause of most that most say, like when they come see you? Look, I think with teens, um, from a personal experience, but also from a from a professional experience, um, a lot of it is very much, you know, environmental. You know, I mean, I've seen clients or patients where it's school related, it's um, so- society related. You know, I'm not fitting in. Um, you know, uh, but sometimes again, it's hereditary. Sometimes it's a matter of there's there's trauma, there's violence, there's all sorts of things within a home environment. There's no safe space. You know, sometimes it's from an identity thing. As as well yeah. you know because again you're yeah. feeling so isolated and so alone and also keep in mind that within you know our communities and our households we don't normalize not being okay yeah you know and it's okay to not be okay mm. it's okay to acknowledge that you know what today when i woke up i can shop i'm not okay mm, you know yeah. and for us to just normalize it within the household to be like no you're having a bit of an off day you know and, and that's that so with teenagers who do they have that conversation with okay. if you come you know you, you approach your your parents your aunts your uncles or you know your support structure and they're going you know suck it up man yeah. like just just do what you need to do and a lot of them just end up suffering in silence so you know with my cousin and my my nephew that that committed suicide Damn. two years back actually Jeez. This week um, would have marked that. Yep. Um, you know, with them, I mean, again, you know, we're a very supportive family and all those things. And obviously you stay with the guilt. As a mental health practitioner, I could have done more. But you're also going, you know what? There was so much happening in that person's world. And could they even articulate it? Could mm. they even make sense of it and process it at that particular time? You know, so I think with teenagers, those are just some of the the, 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 the the trends that I'm pretty much seeing in that regard. Substance abuse, definitely a contributing factor as well, you know, but a lot of external and internal things um, can easily just be a catalyst of, of, of a lot of that. And I then what also, about... Sorry, yeah? psychologically, it is the identity crisis stage, you know, and then you hear a lot of black parents, yo, Petro is stage, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 the stage, <laughs> you know, no my stress is or pale the stage, you know, but not really understanding that that's a very crucial stage because that's when this child will learn to be this type of adult. Mm. It, it's a very traumatic stage because you are in between being a child and being an adult, mm. you know, and you need a parent to help you understand that world. And if they don't, then you now start to want to understand it for yourself. Mm. And hence, you find that a lot of teenagers are not able to self-regulate. So pain feels like death and hence they choose suicide. Sure. You know? And, and, and let's talk about social media. What part do you think that has to play? Sure, social media. Twitter. Because <laughs> <laughs> people project a lot as well. Yes. There's a whole lot of projecting. So what, also, what are the successful measures that one can take to assist those? If you're seeing whether it's social media, they are posting something. What is it? Instead of just, you know, we just think it's posting. What... what what are the measures that one can take that have been successful and you've seen that this does work? Um, I'm not so much on social media because I'm trying to preserve so much of myself from Join it. Join the club. Hey. You know? Hey. And, but also I think that um, someone said this the other time that a person can post a picture but you can actually feel the pain of oh, that person yeah. despite of how gorgeous they look and all of that you can actually feel the emptiness in that picture you know and I think that when we go back to their environments and learning from our parents and how they do things if ever you your parents have told taught you on how to regulate and that when there is isingwa ekaya, that's enough, you know? And then you are able to accept that, you know? But also there's pressure from social media. I think it's actually helping your child to understand their own identity and their own place in the world so that even when they see things on social media, they don't want those things. I think, how do I say this? But I I, I think going back to the room, um, your internal room, is that it's so scary to go there that sometimes people feel so empty that they need to get 
constant external validation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. where you go on to social media to say, oh, how many likes? Mm. You know, that type of thing. Because internally, wow. there is nothing. Hey. You know, and even with those likes, you don't even know those people. Mm. So with an empty jar, you can add anything to it than a jar that has defined themselves Ooh. and who they are. Ooh. Bars. Like that. Bars. Like that. Mm. You know what it's like? It's like, you know, back in the days, we used to get bullied at school. Well, I used to. I don't know about you. Um, <laughs> I, I was, but not like yeah. the, the classic bullying. But yeah, you leave it at school. So when you go home, you're in a safe space with your parents and whatever. Mm-hmm. But now when you come back home because of social media, you take home the bullying with you. Because when you're on the phone... You don't leave it at the door. You yeah. don't leave it at the door. You bring it in your bedroom. You bring it in your bedroom in your now. Bed. It's the last thing you see before you sleep. Exactly. When you wake up in the morning, it's the first thing you see. Damn. But if you have parents that have availed themselves and you can communicate with them, they're able to actually help you with that compared to parents that, because now with the new generation we are working and working and working and we have helpers and all of that we don't have time with our kids to be able to do the smallest things. I think also being a child therapist you see on how a child will not say my dad gave me this or bought me a PS5 or anything like that, but they will always say that you know, he taught me how to ride a bicycle we took a walk. He said this, you know, that he made me a toast or anything like that. So I think we, as like the new generations, we're so quick on just giving things instead of actually being present because we're not present within ourselves. Mm. Get them an Uber. Yeah. 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 Instead of fetching instead them. Of fetching mm. them. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I never thought of that, the parents' role. Yeah. Mm. So what you're saying, our parents were shit? No. <laughs> <laughs> They were busy working, bro. <laughs> Single mom, you know. They don't have time for soul. Saying, I'm feeling down, mom. Right? Go eat this food in the fridge. Why are you feeling yeah. down? You'll, no, you'll be food. very happy afterwards. <laughs> you know? Black parents, bro, were busy working, yeah. and grinding yeah. for us. But I the like best. the point that you are making because it's so easy for us. And I've heard so many people that are depressed and their lives didn't go well that they always blame parents. But mm. we forget to see that Parents are actually humans as well that are learning this world as much as we are, you know, and seeing them for the people that they are, then you take responsibility for your own healing. You reparent yourself. What do I do if I go to therapy and it doesn't work? It doesn't work how? Like, I, I still feel depressed. I still feel like life is not worthy of living. And I've had like three or four sessions of therapy. I think you need more sessions. Mm. Yeah. More, more There's sessions, people yeah. that would be in therapy for like two years, three whoa, years. Whoa. Yeah, 10 and years. And frequency? Yes. Every week? Or? Every week. There's Damn. people that oh. come twice a week. There's people that come like bi-weekly mm. and all of that. So, yeah. I think oh, also more, it, it's right. the willingness of the patients I was to about to themselves. say, you know, the one oh. thing that I always say to clients and patients is that Therapy is only as beneficial as you allow it to be. Mm. That's my first line when people come and see me. I'm like, this will be as successful as you allow it to be. So you need to be open, transparent. My role and function here is not to judge you. It's to help you facilitate this process. It's wow. not to give you advice. It's not to tell you what to do. But it's the willingness that you come in and say, you know what? I'm ready. And it's a vulnerable space. So you know it's uncomfortable. Mm. So we create that setting. And it's only as beneficial as you allow it to be. And what do you guys feel about uh, celebrities, especially men, taking their lives recently? I mean, wh- what did you think about the Ricky Rick situation when you heard that? Yo, it's very sad. Was deep, We're actually no? look- listening to his song, wow. Home. Ooh. Oh, oh. oh, that home is just... Ah, it slaps different now, bro. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It actually it's so does. dark, it's eh? You know? Because it speaks about the heaviness. And I think sometimes... Because going back to the men don't cry, and I think men don't cry has, has resulted in so many men ending up in graves, okay. you know? And that's the sad story because now it's either they express their depression or sadness in, in music. Mm. So it's still a sense of control because I'm not really being vulnerable, man. I'm an artist, mm. you know? So you're not going to read so much into it because yes. this, is my, this is my talent, you know? Or I can just be angry as an emotion of control in, instead of actually being sad and being vulnerable, mm. you know? So um, it was very sad. And I think now listening to the song, you got to understand on how much he was caring mm. and not being able to express it, mm. you know? Maybe there wasn't a space. I don't know him, so I, I can't really say much about him. But it's heartbreaking on how men are not allowed to be... 
to be vulnerable. Yeah. You know, you, I don't know the, the narrative of being a man in the black community. It really breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, it breaks my heart because he, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. there's something that he wrote, I think, on Twitter that said, I'll come back a stronger man. I'll come back now uh, with the world's expectation of how I need to be than actually what I am, which yes. is vulnerable. Which is being oh, vulnerable. Yeah, so stronger is is actually being, being strong. Ubendo, okay. I'll come back. Yeah. Yes, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with the pandemic, it's a serious issue in the country now. Uh, what's the way forward? What is the cure? How can we curb this? I think that um, we need more talks like this. You know, speaking about allowing people to be vulnerable and that it's okay to not be okay, mm. Mm. you know? It's okay for you to be honest with what your body needs. Your body will never, ever lie to you. Whenever you are not feeling okay, you'll get a headache or feeling dizzy or anything like that, but it's your body saying, Isn't I need hangover? you. At no, oh, sometimes okay. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but I also a hangover can also you be an escape food. because you're drinking alcohol to actually cope. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so it can actually be both, yeah. you know. So your body will always tell you what it needs. A body knows on how to heal itself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it needs to ache to heal itself. But oh. we don't get that part. Mm -hmm. We want to get rid of the feeling mm -hmm. instead of actually allowing ourselves to feel sad, ache, and then see what the pain, because the pain always has something to communicate. Wow. We're just not having conversations with it. No medication? Medication, yes. Yeah. I think there's um, there's people that there's patients that ha have depression and therapy alone has yeah. worked for them, yeah. and then there's people that need to be on medication while in therapy. Mm. Yes, and from a from a lifestyle, sorry, from a lifestyle cool. perspective as well. You know, sometimes we. You know, we're always kind of like running to like your medication stuff. And yes, I fully agree with Mpumi. There are people that need to be on medication. Like we're saying, from a biological perspective, hormones and all that stuff. But also just chilling in the sun for 30 minutes, you know, vitamin D. Um, what are you eating? Because, you know, like the saying says, you are what you eat. And not just from a weight gain or weight loss perspective, but it's, it's the quality of petrol that you put into your car, to use an analogy, you mm. know. So what are, we, what are we doing on a daily basis in terms of looking after ourselves holistically from a biopsychosocial perspective, mental, emotionally, and physically as well. So some of those things contribute to also just a healthier well-being. Yeah. You know, yeah. I guess also another thing is that I was actually having a discussion with someone and I was saying sometimes depression can be projected. Yes. You yeah. know, so also having boundaries and surrounding yourself with people that would not also make you like have a low mood and all sure. of that so mm. be having those boundaries because it is actually also what you put into your system as well mm. how, how do i deal with uh, emotionally right with a family member or a friend or someone close committing suicide because i feel like if that were to happen i'd play i think maybe did i cause it Was what could I, I have done problem what could i have done you know what i mean like yeah. how, how do people and especially you you deal with a lot of trauma patients and yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that's trauma yeah that you know is. how do you deal with that when someone kills themselves look it's a process and i'm going to speak on this from a personal perspective like i said earlier on we had two suicides during the pandemic um of two teenage boys as well and you know, like I said, I was left triggered this week, especially after Ricky's um, suicide and it being one of them's birthday yesterday. You know, it just all came back and I checked up on, you know, family and all of that. And I'm like, it's a journey. And I think people think there needs to be a time frame to it, but it's like losing any other person, a parent, a child, a loved one, is that even after 10 years, people are still grieving and still mm. bereaved at the mm. end of the day. So it's a, it's a process. So therapy works for some people. But I think what Mbumi said earlier on about self-regulating, acknowledging how you're feeling about it, sitting in the uncomfortable, people avoid sitting with their uncomfortable emotions. Yeah. You know, because we're always associating with the positive and happy ones. Sometimes you literally have to sit, not even sometimes, you have to sit in the uncomfortable. You have to kind of roll with those punches and you take it a day at a time you know obviously once it gets to a point where you're not functioning anymore that's a flag you know then you do you really need to kind of reach out and ask for help but from a grieving perspective you can't dictate to someone how long it's going to take to to, to heal from that and do you ever really 100% heal I'd personally say no 
you know, you just get to, you get to a point where you learn how to live with that person having, you know, taken their lives or even losing that person. I just want to um, like add on what Saul is saying is that the blaming yourself process how do you manage that because especially when he's mentioning stuff, if someone takes their life like who's close to you how do you heal from that the blaming you're blaming because obviously a lot of people start blaming themselves like why and why and why how do you manage that look I think I was saying this to Mbumi just yesterday where I was like I'm still I thought after two years you know I dealt with it and I took it to therapy so by the way therapists go to therapy as well wow we hello wow for real That's no 100% it is absolutely I mean we, we would be hypocrites sitting here then if not you know yeah. so you need to have that experience of 100% you need to feel how it is to be a patient to be a client at the end of the day but also we're human so we go through stuff so even now with the guilt I just realized in this week where I'm like oh no we do Melo actually you still still have a lot of work to do in that regard because I'm still sitting with guilt Hore I'm a mental health practitioner mm-hmm. you know two close family members took their lives young ones that I had a very beautiful relationship with so I need to also then take it to therapy and be like what is it about that sure. and understand it mm-hmm. you know because guilt again it's, it's another byproduct that okay what is it about that guilt where is that guilt coming from Bila Bila you know understanding that so it's a process it's a process cool man if I'm watching this I want to get a hold of you guys how can one do that so I am yo what's my handle on Instagram NPK NPK (laughs) underscore clinical psychologist on Instagram okay and then NPK clinical psychologist on Facebook and then uh, they can also reach me on my number which is 073-638-2495 you repeat that Um, 073-638-2495 and then my website is npk dot npk clinical psychologist dot co dot z it's like you're not sure eh? I am sure (laughs) (laughs) see I told you I told you that (laughs) I'm not so much on social media and things so Uh, yeah Um, and you we do on my side um, on Instagram uh, my public page is Boyd's Buikuto Um, on Facebook it's Bui Toko Consulting um, and then there's Bidumelo Bikuto, my, my, my fa- other Facebook uh, profile. Um, in terms of private practice, um, it's under Suede Wellness, which is also on um, Instagram. And contact details are 061 825 3588. That's 061 825 3588. And then we talk about consulting the website as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. Hey, I'm not sure if I'm depressed or not after having this. I need to go back home and check. Because my body's feeling a bit weird. But you have a therapist. You have a therapist. Yeah. So you must just go and consult go again. Yeah. Send me those numbers. And I'm starting March. Oh, for real? I need, I need ah, therapy. I yeah. need a lot of therapy. How, how do I know? How do I, how do I spot a horrible therapist? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, for real. Like, because like, there are horrible therapists. Like, there's good podcasters, bad podcasters. In every profession, there's people who know what they're doing, people who don't know what they're doing. How do I spot a horrible therapist? How to lose your job in five seconds. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, look, I, I, I'm not going to speak in terms of how to spot a bad therapist, but I also want people as clients or patients to be aware that sometimes it's our own avoidance and we project when we go. So I go and see Mbumi as, as a therapist and I'm like, she's horrible, but it's because I'm not ready to be in that vulnerable space. So we also need to be aware, are we being avoidant? Or is that person just not emotionally available because we're human too. So there's some people that might be, you know, compa- have compassion fatigue. They might be exhausted, you know, but I don't know if Mbumi you want to add on in terms of just, not I think horrible, also, but... They don't want to answer I, this. I, I, <laughs> nah, bro, <laughs> come on now. Hey, listen, okay, okay, no, no. Let's say I'm there. I'm fully there. I want to get help. I'm being transparent. I'm, I'm not doubting this therapist. I'm just, but she's you bad. Know, you know, oh, therapy is a relationship. You know, it's a relationship between your therapist and the patient. Mm. And as much as there's people that will gel with me, Mm. they might not gel with you or they might not gel with with Dumelo. You know, so that's Mm, also important. You know, there's people that you might see and you find that, oh, the context now is different and um, I'm not being understood. So Mm. some people would actually not see a therapist for that. But I think another thing is that consistency with your therapist, like a person that is um, Cancelling all the time when you need to have an appointment, then it's a problem. I'm talking about therapists now, mm-hmm. not patients, you know. And um, a, um, a therapist that would want to now 
enforce their own beliefs on you. Uh, you know mm. that type of thing, like okay. uh, in the Bible or in my lozi nguso and other type of thing. You know, and not you introducing that and spending more time teaching the therapist instead of actually being in therapy. Mm. Um, a therapist that speaks more about themselves and not actually making it about the patient themselves. Mm. You know, so I think consistency and someone that is there to actually be there and be present with you in the space. Maybe we must just date a therapist. You can have pillow talk. <laughs> <laughs> pillow talk. <laughs> <laughs> you release. <laughs> just. <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much for coming thank you, through, man. Thank really you. appreciate yeah, it. Nice. So thank, you. thank you. But it sounds like this is so complex. We could talk about this for like it's two hours. Very I think complex, like man. the time is very uh, short. Like there's so much to unpack. Bro, oh. Yeah. But anyway. Thank you, guys. We are here. Yeah.